In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run stable diffusion on a cloud GPU for less than a dollar per hour. For today's example, we are using runpod.io. You don't have to use runpod. You can use any other cloud GPU you want. I'm just using this as an example. And this is going to be a beginner's video. So I will go into a lot of different details. Feel free to skip through the chapters. I'll put the timestamps and all the links in the description. Once you're on runpod, sign up. I have already signed up, so I'll just log in. Go to Community Cloud, choose any of the cheap GPU that you like. I recommend using the RTX 3090. It has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Hit Deploy, click Customize Deployment. For the volume disk, put 200. For container disk, put 20. Click Set Override. And here, on the template end, look for RunPod Stable Diffusion Web UI. Hit Continue. Now, once you hit deploy, it's gonna take a little while to start because it will download a lot of necessary files and you can check the log to see when it's ready to start. Once Runpod.io is done setting up everything, click connect and go to connect to Jupyter Lab port 8888. Then under workspace, go to the stable diffusion web UI folder. Here, we'll download all the checkpoint models and other necessary files to start creating images. Under Stable Diffusion Wave UI, go into the Models folder, then go into the Stable Diffusion folder. Next, go to civitai.com, search for the Dream Shaper model. In the model page, look for the download button, right click on it, click copy link address. Go back to Jupyter Lab. Now start a new terminal, type wget space. This will copy the model from civitai to your run pod. Click enter. It's gonna take some time to download. Once it's downloaded, will have to rename the file in order for Stable Diffusion Wave UI to recognize it. Click the file on the left hand panel, press F2 on your keyboard, type dreamshaper.safe tensors. So spelling is very important in this one. The file extension is called safe tensors. I will zoom in here a little bit for you guys so that you can see it clearly. S-A-F-E-T-E-N-S-O-R-S. -E Next go back to civit ai we'll download the rev animated model these are the two checkpoint models that i primarily use for most of my generations i just wanted to show you guys how to install them on runpod right click on the download button click copy link address go back to jupyter lab write wget space paste the link hit enter wait for it to download then rename it all right we've finished downloading the rev animated checkpoint model so we'll click the downloaded model hit f2 Type rev animated 122, that's the version, dot save tensors. Next, we'll download a VA file to make sure our renders look nice and crisp in color. So go to Civit AI, search for color 101 VAE, right click on the download button, copy link address, go back to Jupyter Lab, close the terminal, and on the left hand panel, go back to models, click on VAE, open a new terminal, type wget, space, paste the link, hit enter. Search for add more detail, find this LoRa, open the page, right click on the download button, copy link address, go back to Jupyter Lab, make sure you're in the LoRa folder under models, open a new terminal, type wget, space, paste the link. Once it's done downloading, click the file, hit F2, type add detail.safe tensors. Go back to civitai.com, do a quick search for this LoRa, L O W R A, go to the model page, right click the download button, copy link address, go back to Jupyter Lab, make sure you're in the correct folder, type wget space, paste the link. Once that's downloaded, click the file, hit F2, type L O W R A dot safe tensors we're almost there close the terminal window go back to stable diffusion web ui folder go into embeddings now we'll download some textual inversions this will help us add negative prompts to our image generation go to civit ai search for bad dream plus unrealistic dream download unrealistic dream click this tab right click on download copy link address go back to jupyter lab open a new terminal type wget space paste once it's downloaded click the file hit f2 type unrealistic dream dot pt go back to the same page this time click the bad dreams click the bad dream tab right click on the download button copy link address go back to jupyter lab type wget space paste link once that's downloaded click the file hit f2 change it to bad dream dot pt next we'll download some control net files We'll go back to Stable Diffusion Web UI. Just close the terminal for now. Go into Extensions, SD Web UI Control Net, under Go to Models. 
Here we'll have to download the ControlNet checkpoint models. Now go to huggingface.co, search for ControlNet version 1.1, right next to model card, go to files and versions. You don't have to download all of them. We just need to download the Python files. So for our experiment today, for this tutorial, I'll just download a few of these. First look for the depth PTH model. So ControlNet V11 F1P SD15 depth.pth. Right next to it, you'll see this download icon. Right click on it, select copy link address go back to Jupyter lab open a new terminal type wget space paste the link it will take some time to download and the good thing is you won't have to rename the file this time it will download the file with the proper name and extension I'll download the Linert anime model as well right click the download icon copy link address go back to models wget space paste the link. I'll close all of these windows. Almost have everything that we need. Close the terminal. Go back to run pods, my pods page. You can find it here under manage. Everything is running properly now. Click connect, connect to HTTP service port 3001. It will open the stable efficient web UI for you. Once it's open, once it opens for the first time, go into settings, scroll down, go into user interface, scroll down under info, quick settings list, type SD, then select SD VA type clip select clip stop at last layers hit apply settings go to control net change it to three or four however many control net units you want to use I usually keep it at three hit apply settings now go to extensions tab click check for updates looks like everything is properly updated click apply and restart UI and that's how you get your stable diffusion web UI up and running with all the required extensions on RunPod. let me explain the UI a little bit to you guys if your UI looks a little different than mine that's perfectly okay I'm just using a theme on the top left hand corner you'll see the checkpoint selector so under a stable diffusion checkpoint you can click this drop down menu and select the checkpoint you want to use for this example I'm using rev animated if it doesn't show up here hit the refresh button and it will load the checkpoint model that you have copied to your models folder next we have the VAE selector from my experience color 101 VAE works great with rev animated that's why I'm using it but feel free to use a different VAE with your checkpoint models. You can even select it to none if you don't want to use a VAE model with this. Next we have Clipscape. I usually leave it to one. If you want to learn more technical details about Clipscape, look it up on GitHub. Then we have a few tabs here. Each tab has a different function. The first one is text to image. So for this example, we're going to be using this one. This is very straightforward. You enter a text, you hit generate, it generates an image for you. There are a few settings that you should consider before generating an image. First, we have the positive prompt section. Here we write the image that we're trying to generate. For this example, let's create a cyberpunk soldier. I'll write raw photo, close up shot of a cyberpunk male soldier, futuristic sci-fi background. And that's it. I'll keep it very simple. So for the negative prompt, you can either write it down like we wrote down the positive prompt or you can use textual inversions or embeddings. I'll show you how to do that. Under the generate button, you'll find a few shortcut buttons here. The middle one here says show or hide extra network. You click that one, it will open up this window. Under textual inversion, you should see the two negative text embeddings that we downloaded. Bad dream and unrealistic. I'll just click both of them, it will put them here. You can separate them by comma if you want. Then we have the sampling method. So for text to image generation, the latent diffusion uses different sampling methods depending on how you set the parameters. Feel free to do experiment with all of the different samplers and see which one works best for you. So for this example, I will select VPN++ SDE Keras. Then we have the sampling steps. I usually choose something between 15 to 30 depending on the checkpoint model. Then we have the width and height parameters. So this basically decides the dimension of the rendered image. So for the Rave animated model, as it's based on stable diffusion version 1.5, I recommend using 768 by 768 for the base resolution. Then you can upscale it however you want. If you want to create a different ratio, you can do that. Just make sure that the minimum width or height is 768. In that case, the generated image will look nice and crisp. Batch count and batch size. The batch count means how many images will stable diffusion generate based on this prompt. If you keep it to one, it will just generate one image with one seed number. CFG scale decides 
how much your prompt will influence your image generation. So the lower the CFG scale, the more creative the output will be. I usually use something between 5.5 to 10, but you can be as creative as you want with this. Next is the seed number. When you hit the generate button, if the seed is set to negative one, Stable Diffusion will generate a random seed number and then produce the image based on that seed number. Now, if you generate a few images and if you like the style of the photo that you're trying to create, you can always copy that seed number and replace that here. This button here sets the seed to negative one, which means a random seed number. And this one, this one reuses the seed from the last image generation. Now we're gonna set the batch count to two and the batch size to two. Stable Diffusion will generate four different images and we can take a look at those images and see which one we like and you can copy the seed number from there to generate more images in that style. All right, let's hit generate. Once it's done generating, you'll see all of these images in a grid like this and you can choose to upscale this if you want. I think this came out decent. Then if you like this one, and you want to generate more images like this and maybe change a few things in the design. What you can do, you can click the seed number underneath the image over here, copy it, and then paste it in the seed section. And if you want to remove something from here, then I can either write it in the negative prompt. For example, if I don't want the tubes near his neck, I can write tubes. And if I want his hair to be maybe longer and black, then I can write long black hair the positive prompt section. I've changed it to a close-up shot of a cyberpunk female soldier, long black hair, futuristic sci-fi background. Let's hit generate. This is how it looks when it generates images. Yeah, see, the image kind of looks like the original one that we created, but it doesn't have those tubes. It has She has longer hair and it's a woman now. That's how you can create images on Stable Diffusion, Automatic 1111. And if you need some inspiration with different prompts, what you can do is go to civicai.com. In this example, we used Rave Animated. So I'll just search Rave Animated, look at different photos that other people have created. And if I like something, I'll just copy the prompt from there. So for example, I like this fantasy landscape. So I'll click the I button over here, click copy prompt, go back to stable diffusion. I'll paste it here. As you can see, when you paste the prompt, check for these LoRa information. And if you don't have that LoRa installed in your Automatic 1111, you can remove that. It will still create something similar to the image that you saw here. So we'll just go ahead and click Generate. There you go. A beautiful landscape created with Rev Animated Model. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Hit the like button on the video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to support my work, buy me a coffee. The link's in the description below. Until next time, stay safe and happy creating.